By now, you've probably heard a bunch about how great Fallout is, and honestly, this won't be much different. It is great, probably my favorite adaptation of a video game in a TV show. But there's a lot about this show that I think shows the difference between understanding what an adaptation should be and what some other shows fail to understand. Mass spoilers ahead. Now there's two major things that I think make this show great, the overall story and the dialogue itself. The best way to describe the dialogue is that it's seriously silly, and it fits the series completely. Lucy being very proper and clean cut for the most part, juxtaposed with Cooper's thespian way of being as dramatic as possible, to Max's, well, scaredy catisms, the dialogue matches the games in a way that I don't think I've seen another adaptation do outside of just copying scenes word for word. In a game series that is known for having funny dialogue at times, I think the show does a lot to do the same, especially with a lot of the interactions that Lucy has with randoms in the wasteland, or when Max finds out about hot showers. And when you say hot shower, what does that mean exactly? Hot, hot. Jumping at the grease. But what I really like about the story overall is the theme of corruption, both external and internal, and I think the way it's handled is done really well. With Lucy, she has to contend with not losing herself and her ideals when faced with the scary outside world with its scary robo-doctors. Cooper's already become a ghost or ghoul of his former self after 200 years of searching for his family. Max's desire for power ultimately brings him to a place where he's really not equipped to be, and everything that's been happening in the vaults. We see Cooper's quote, Ain't much stage clean up here, Vaulty. And it's in that moment that I realized it's really been a long time since I've watched something that felt like it had a point to it. Even though the main plot of this season doesn't actually change, it just goes from, I'm gonna find my dad, to, I'm gonna find my dad. We see the change in the characters and their growth, and that's how I prefer it, especially when it's for an adaptation of something where growth is usually the most important part of it. Is the story perfect? No. I do think that it does sometimes feel a little drawn out in spots as the episodes go on, but it's not like there's a lot of fluff that actually doesn't feel needed. My issues are more with just how things are segmented that can make it feel like things are longer than they actually need to be. On the character front, we've got the big three that I've already mentioned, Lucy, Cooper, and Maximus. Lucy, played by Ella Purnell, is our main gal, and as a goody two-shoes that is confronted with a world that wants to eat her, literally, I think she's great. As someone who knows the only way to play Fallout games is with good karma because being mean to fictional characters is wrong, and then saving before doing something we're not supposed to, just because we all get a little curious sometimes, I'm glad that she's a very good character, but I'm also glad to see how much she does grow throughout the season. She changes in that she sees more of the world as it is rather than what she's been told, and knows that she can't always rely on what she was taught in the vault, but she also doesn't entirely lose herself like other characters in the waste have. Speaking of which, we have Cooper, played by Walton Goggins, a guy I'm always excited to see, and sure, he was in The Hateful Eight, Django, and underrated Bethesda Jim Prey, but man, is Mr. Goggins fire in this one. As far as I know, this is his third time playing a cowboy, but this is definitely his best take on that style of character, and I think it comes down to a couple of things. The first is that in a similar way to his MCU brother, he's a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. In the show, Cooper is just playing one of his characters from film while disguised as the big bad ghoul. Now, that's not me saying that I think he's faking. You don't start eating a dude just for the bit, but I do think that it helps ground him back to a time where he was actually in control. That and the megaton of drugs that keeps him going towards his mission to find his family. I do think that does call into question on why he was hanging out in a cemetery somewhere, but you know, pesky details. What I'm really excited to see next is to see where he goes from here, because seeing him as a sort of guide to Lucy without all the torture would really make this feel like the good old days with me and John Hancock running around through the Commonwealth. And finally, we have Aaron Moten, who plays Maximus, who is really interesting to me because my opinion of the character while I was watching is very different than how I feel right now as I'm writing this. Initially, I was lukewarm because I really liked his dynamic with Lucy and I think him having the perspective of living within the ways but still feeling somewhat foreign to it like Lucy is cool, but I just really, really don't like characters that are super soft but act hard. Pause. I that was crazy. But what I mean is that when a character is obviously not about it but gets a couple wins, or even worse, takes credit for something that he didn't even do. To me, it feels like they're getting handouts, and for Maximus, I don't really think he needs that. I think Aaron does a great job playing the meek comedic guy who's more in the middle between good and bad, who gets himself way over his head, and seeing him transition from that to the more serious and reflective moments didn't feel out of place either. So I think him earning more of his place within the Brotherhood and seeing that growth would help, because right now, I don't think he's written as strong as the other two. On the other other hand, because of that sort of neutrality, I also see this as a neutral playthrough, so I get it, 
it's just not really for me. Also, 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 he's a generational fumbler, and I just really can't respect that. I was also really happy to see Moises Arias in this, as he's my second favorite boy. He's weird, off-putting, and hates every job he's ever had. Probably my favorite character. I don't... I don't really have any more to say other than that, but I think overall the acting in this show is pretty standout. From the Vaultians to the very, very unwashed masses, there wasn't a performance I didn't actually like. I talked about it a little bit earlier, but this show is really the template for making a video game adaptation. I'll try to keep this part short, but I want to bring it up since I just talked about it. But this show really does the video game adaptation well in every way that Halo struggled, and I get that they are very two different shows. I mean, one is good and the other one is bad. but. Well, there's really no but. That's that's kind of it. What this show does well is that instead of trying to make a new canon or introducing their own shit that they'll abandon in a season, they take what's been established and create something special within that universe. They also did a great job of recreating gameplay moments that kept the spirit of the games, like walking around with your pit boy blasting oldies, NPCs who walk in a direction and then do an immediate 180 because their danger tracker finally kicked off. And who could forget my favorite Fallout staple, skeletons in unfortunate circumstances. The show also translates just how violent the games are too, and usually action sequences and fight scenes aren't that special to me in these. But in the very first episode, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in anything happens, and it absolutely changed how I viewed this show in the best way possible. But most importantly, with everything that I mentioned, the spirit of Fallout is never in question here. Sure, there's probably some things that the hardcore nerds probably have problems with, like timeline issues or whatever, but that type of pedantic hyper-focusing on things that don't actually impact the story or characters is never something that I'll actually care about. I only have a problem with changes when something is newly introduced in the story and it either doesn't actually change anything or, even worse, actively messes with the story they're trying to tell. For this show, there's really only one thing that I think was a bad writing choice, and that has to do with Moldaver, and really the NCR as a whole. I don't really think that she should have had any connection with Cooper, because one, it ultimately doesn't even matter, and two, it introduces a really weird plot hole, because how is she even still alive? Even though she says that all the companies she worked for were bought out by vault Tech, she doesn't seem to still work for them on the low, and she definitely wouldn't have been in Vault 31 with Hank. So how did she survive 200 years, and why is she revered by Vault 4 to the point of them doing a blood ritual? And now that she's, spoilers, dead, none of that information is probably going to be talked about, and with her being the main antagonist of the season, I think it's weird that they kind of didn't do anything with her except making her this big boogie woman. It's also weird that she leads this branch of the NCR, which is supposed to at least be somewhat civil, but instead of bringing them into Vault 33, she finds a bunch of raiders, who the NCR shouldn't align themselves with, and makes them do the raid. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to think about it, like she could have been trying to not directly involve the NCR for whatever reason, or these guys were captured and offered something to do this run with her. It's all up in the air, just like how they even got in the vault, or really what happened to the people in Vault 32, and it's just weird to me with how well the show wrote other characters characters and situations that they dropped the ball on her and this key inciting incident. But luckily, that's really the only thing that I didn't like, and even that might just be something that they're saving for season 2. I still think that they should have said something here, but I'll cut it some slack. And as I was writing this, the show just got renewed. <laughs> So let's talk about a couple things that I'm really looking forward to. The first are super mutants. There's none in this season, and I do partly understand why, because they would require a lot of VFX to get right, and since they usually come in packs, the time constraints would probably be too tight. But having just one, like Fox or Neil, show up would be really cool. Absolutely no centaurs, though. The gulpers were bad enough. I do not want to see these things up close. No thank you. I really enjoyed the inclusion of the Junk Jet and the Ripper in this season, and I think continuing to have those special weapons, or showing Lucy or Maximus crafting something to show more of their growth as Wastelanders, and even tie into the idea of them gaining metaphorical skill points or something would be really cool. With them going to New Vegas to find Lucy's dad, it'll be interesting to see how New Vegas the game ties in, since a lot can happen in your playthrough, and since there's multiple playthroughs, it's not really like they could choose one. I'm not really all that interested in seeing if any characters come in aside from Mr. House since we see his pre-war version, but seeing Yes Man or the other Securitrons would be pretty cool to me. Here's hoping that somebody gets a Pimp Boy 3 billion though. Honestly, I just really can't wait to see where they go from here. This first season, especially the first couple episodes because the way it's shot is 
actually crazy like with the vault being taken over and then once it settles in it does feel more in line with usual tv shows it's not a huge downgrade but you can definitely see a difference in cinematography as the show goes on also also i think there could have been some different song choices like putting butcher pete during this scene but I also see why they probably didn't, and aside from that little change, I think the song choices were very on point this season. But what did you think? If you've never played the games before, did the show get you to check them out, or are you just wrong and didn't like the show? Let me know in the comments, mayhaps like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.